Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight in grade 5 in module 4, we are working on lesson number 31. And that means that we are dividing decimal dividends by non-unit decimal divisors. In other words, we're starting to do division. Um, like full-fledged, real, full-on division. Awesome. So you may need to go ahead and re-watch some of these things or slow them down or uh, pause for a second to think about something. No problem. That's the beauty of the video. Look at uh, number one. I'm actually not going to do either A or B, but I do want to go through the example that they provide um, because I want to give you guys two problems that you can practice with. So I want to see what they did. So look at the. Let's look at problem number one. Estimate and then divide. So they start with 78 and 4 tenths, and they divide that by 7 tenths. And right away I see, oh, I see the sort of wavy equal signs that indicates that we're already in the world of estimates. So they say, well, this is very similar to something like about 770 divided by 7. So I see what they've done here. They've, they've made this first number about 10 times larger, but convenient for dividing by 7. And they've made this second number about 10 times larger. In fact, exactly 10 times larger. Instead of 7 tenths, it's 7 wholes. And then, now that they've got this estimated, they can do this sort of mental math division. 770 divided by 7 is about 110. Okay, fair enough. So that's their estimate. Then they actually go ahead and they step through the division here. So, 78 and 4 tenths divided by 7 tenths. And they say something that we said in the previous lesson, which is it would be a lot more convenient if this, div if this uh, divides, um, I'm sorry, if this denominator were a whole number. So they say, well, let's just go ahead and multiply both the numerator and denominator by 10. That will leave, that will just create a new equivalent fraction. Uh, so they go ahead and do that. So 78.4 times 10 is 784, and 7 tenths times 10 is just 7. And now they've got whole number division, especially a whole number in the denominator, and they can go ahead and do that division. And I'm noticing that they did that division over here, 784 divided by 7. So they divide up the 700s into groups of 7. They put, that puts 100 in every group. That means that 1 times 7, or 7, get used up. That means that there's no more hundreds to divide up. But let's pull down our next unit, which is 10. So we've got 8 tens. Well, if we're going to divide 8 tens into, into groups of 7, we'd be able to put 1 in each group, right? 1 10 in each group. 1 times 7 is 7. And that leaves us with just 1 10 remaining. Uh, well, we decompose that 10 into 1s and bring down our other 1s. That gives us 14 1s to divide up. 14 1s into groups of 7. We'll be able to make 2 groups of that. 2 times 7 is 14, and that uses everything up, and we have our answer, 112. And they didn't really say, show this to you in the example, but importantly, we should look back at our estimate. We estimated that this would be about 110, and when we got to the end, uh, to our quotient, we got 112. So very close to our original estimate, uh, which gives us confidence that that, in fact, is correct. Now remember, we could check our, mul our division with multiplication by multiplying 112 by multiplying our divisor times our quotient to see if we got our dividend. We could do that. Um, I'm not going to do that for the purposes of this uh, example, but certainly you can check your answers that way. That's especially true if you come up with something that's quite a bit different than your original estimate. That can either mean that your estimate was incorrect, or it can mean that your math um, on the actual problem solving was incorrect. But something is, has gone haywire if the, the estimate and your final answer, your final quotient, aren't in the same ballpark. Okay, I'm going to let you go ahead and do 1A or 1B. And let's take a look at problem number two. Problem number two, the directions are simple. Estimate and then divide. An example has been done for you. So it's the same kind of example as before. I'm thinking we can go ahead and try our estimate first. Let's see. So they, they already have the squiggly lines to remind us that we've got an estimate. And let's see. Um, I notice they do two things when they do their estimates. They not only sort of make this number friendlier, but they also eliminate um, as much as possible the... Um, the decimals by multiplying them by 10 or by 100. So let's do that in two steps just to make this a little clearer. I think that seven that 19.44 is about the same. Let's see. I think that's about like 19.5. And let's see. We're dividing by, uh, let's see, 0 0.54. Well, that's pretty close to 0 0.5. And I want to rewrite then those two numbers uh, with a decimal, I'm sorry, with a denominator that's a little friendlier. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply both of these by 5 to say this is very similar to 195 divided by 5. And 195 divided by 5 is going to be, let's see, that's going to be 37. I can do that in my head. Um, you might need to do this, 195 divided by 5, 3, 15, 4, 5, oh, 49, see? 
<laughs> an error. Nice job, 39. So I think our estimated quotient is about 39. So now let's go ahead and let's actually solve this problem. So I'm gonna sort of follow the pattern that they did here. So first I'm gonna arrange my decimal numbers in a fraction, so that's 19.44 divided by 0 0.5, sorry, 0 0.54, awesome. And then uh, I noticed that we need to try to make our dividend into a whole number. And if our dividend just had tenths in it, we would only need to multiply by 10, but I'm noticing it has hundredths too. So I think we're gonna need to multiply by 100. So 19.44 times 100 over 0 0.54 times 100. Oops, there we go. And let's go ahead and do that multiplication. 19.44 times 100. We'll just move every number two place values to the left, and we do the same in the denominator, and we end up with 1944 divided by 54. Okay, well now we're down to um, now we're down to division that we can normally handle, right? So let's go ahead and handle that division. Let's see, 1944 divided by 54. Oof. Okay, let's see what we got. Um, I don't think I can make I can't make any groups of 1900s. Uh, into groups of 54, but if I think of these as 194 tens, I can definitely make some groups. I think I can make three groups. Three groups. Three groups of 10. Let's see, so 3 times 4 is 12, and 3 times 5 is 15, plus one more is 16. There we go. And that means we've used 162 tens out of our 194 tens. All right. So we do a subtraction. Let's see. That's two, three. Yep. And that's correct. We can't make another group. So we've got 32 tens. I'm going to decompose those into ones. That would be 320 ones plus the four more ones from before. And now I've got to figure out how many more I can make out of this. Let's see. How many groups? Hmm. Uh, let's see. I think I could make six groups. If I could make six groups of that, six times 50 would be about 300. Let's see if that works. I think it'll be about six groups. Six times four is 24. And six times five is 30, plus those two more is 32. Hey, unbelievable. We've got our quotient. Our quotient is 36. We've solved our problem, and our problem is 36. And when we compare it with our original estimate of 39, we're in that same ballpark, right? We're pretty convinced. Now, we could check our division with multiplication. We could multiply 54 times 36 to see if we got 1,944. I'm pretty confident that we would. Um, but we've done our estimate. We've, done our, we've converted our decimal division to whole number division to make it a little easier on ourselves. We've done our whole number division, gotten our answer, checked it with our estimate. Good to go. Last problem. Problem number three is a different type solved using the standard algorithm. Use the thought bubble to show your thinking as you rename the divisor as a whole number. Okay, so I'm looking at their pattern here. They started with 38.4 divided by 0 0.6, and I noticed that they kind of moved the decimal one spot to the right. This is the same as multiplying by 10, right, to create a new problem that was a little friendlier, 384 divided by 6. Let's see if we can do the same thing over here. We've got 7 point, let's see, oops. 7.52 divided by 0 0.08. And so I'm noticing that we're going to need to move those decimals not just one place, but two places to the right in order to get rid of the decimal in the denominator. So I'm going to draw a little arrow that we need to move two spots this way, which means we need to do two spots that way. And I think that means we're going to have 752 divided by 8. And now... I think we can do, we have, this is enough information to do our regular actual division, right? 752 divided by 8. We don't have enough hundreds to make groups of 8. That's okay. So we'll decompose that and think about it as tens, right? 75 tens divided into groups of 8. Oh, I think we can make 9 groups of 8. That'll use up 72 of our 75 tens. That leaves us with 32 ones. I think we can make 4 groups of 8 with that. 4 times 8 is 32. Yep. Sure enough, nothing left. So it looks like our answer is 94. Awesome. Well, that's all I've got for today's homework. Thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.